What's going on under there? That's, that's an awful lot of kicking in the ear. Good morning, Jaw. You got a big itch in the back of your ear? Well, good morning, Lionhearts. Just me, my tea, no coffee yet. I'm going to have coffee right after this. And a fire drill. Fire alarm. I talked to the maintenance man. He said uh, that the one went off the other day. He said, yeah, when we get uh, a certain amount of rain, it sets off the sensors and the fire alarms go off and they don't want to fix it. <laughs> so, basically, now all I need to know is that every time it rains, if the fire alarm goes off, to just disregard it. See what I endure living in Los Angeles? I don't know what we're going to do today. Um, my head's still swimming about that. I got about five or six different things. Just deciding how far I want to drive. And actually, one of the places that I really was thinking that today was the day for, um, I looked it up, and because it's President's Day, it's closed, so I can't go today. Fire alarm's done. Anyway, Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I was giving this a listen to this morning, and... I think that's inspired what we're going to do today. One of my all-time favorite records, one of my all-time favorite bands, and one of my all-time favorite eras of the band. I think we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to the house that Weezer first moved into when they first became Weezer. Where they wrote all the songs for the first two albums, where they recorded the Say It Ain't So video, and where the Weezer legend was born. The house on Amherst. Now I don't think there's ever been any miscommunication that I am a gigantic Weezer fan, especially the early era. And uh, it all started kind of when uh, I was in my first band and one of the members of the band made me listen to Weezer Blue to learn some songs. I ended up loving it and he goes, oh, you got to hear Pinkerton. And I ended up loving Pinkerton so much I got a tattoo on my arm of it when I turned 18. Um, and then... When they were inactive for about three or four years, Rivers was going through a depression, um, I was combing around on the internet, found some sites that had some bootlegs, and what they had was all of the, and this is when it was hard to get bootlegs, like you couldn't find stuff in stores. Um, I found all of the early sessions from this house that we're gonna go to. Um, all the kitchen tapes, the garage tapes, and even Rivers' solo show when he was going to Harvard in Boston after the Blue Album. So this should be quite a trip Weather's not too bad today, but I saw later on in the day we are supposed to get some rain. So since there's a little bit of sun, I'm going to take a walk down to Hollywood and Highland uh, just to get some exercise in and get my day started from that train stop. And plus, I never knew this, but down where the mall is, they recreated part of D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, and there's a plaque down there. So let's go see it. You see this? So the monuments above are a... Uh a reproduction of D.W. Griffith's Intolerance set. I'll show you when we get out there. As you can tell, it's three stories high. So much like uh, DeMille's Ten Commandments set that we went out to visit and look for, built larger than life and pretty cool. I never I never realized until I was just cutting through here to get on the subway what this was or that this was a reproduction of that. Way cool. And there's uh, an elephant up on that tier and there's also one right up there. Escalators that don't work. Classic. It's like a training course. Weird. Well guys, in case you didn't know how big of a Weezer fan I am, this was one of my first tattoos when I was 18. Dedicated to Weezer. Here it is. Straight back there you can see the garage, the famous garage that uh, that Weezer recorded the Say It Ain't So video in. And the actual house that they lived in was right in the back of this one. And uh, they moved here on March 19th, 1992. 
It was uh, Matt Sharp and Rivers Cuomo and their friend Justin moved in here. And they had previously been kind of like mixing out members of the band when they lived over on uh, a house on Stoner. But they moved in here on March 19th and they actually got their very first gig that day. Um, they didn't have an official name yet. They were going by various ideas of names like the Niblet and Outhouse and Hummingbird. All kinds of weird names before uh, finally deciding on Weezer. And they moved here, like I said, on March 19th, played their first gig that night. And then in April, they started having their first recording sessions back in that garage. And the way that garage was actually laid out was back to the right against what would be the side wall is where Pat was uh, stationed with his drum set. Um, closest to the back, where the backyard was, that we would have seen them playing hacky sack in, say, ain't so. That was where Brian Bell would have been, eventually, for the Say, ain't so video. Rivers would have been in the center, and closest to us would have been Matt Sharp, and that's how they would have recorded that video. They also recorded a little bit of it uh, walking through the house. and I'm sorry, I don't want to go and trespass and go back there where their actual entrance was, but you can see the garage, and that's kind of the main deal because they would eventually record their very first demo in that garage back there. They would record uh, Thief, You've Taken All That Was Me, Let's Sew Our Pants Together, and then eventually they would end up recording uh, a really great demo that I have um, called The Kitchen Tapes. And they would do Only in Dreams and My Name is Jonas and just kind of demoing out what they were going to eventually do for the, uh, what would eventually become the Blue Album. And they lived here until, uh, well, you know what's crazy about this place is that even after they decided to move out, they would, they got their friends to rent it. So from 1992 till 2005, it was all musicians that were renting it. And when Weezer moved in, what they did was they told the owner of the property that they, um, they were UCLA students, which they weren't, um, and that they made a lot of noise because they were art students so that they wouldn't get in trouble for uh, having a band here. And, you know, it's crazy. I've always had a very strong kinship to Weezer. I've always identified with the lyrics, the music, everything about Weezer. And uh, this was just one of those things that when I found the address, I had to come. Because Rivers actually, Rivers and I went to the same music school. And when, uh, when I moved out here, I really wanted to meet him so bad. And Weezer was inactive. He was in a depression. They hadn't done anything in years. And uh, almost like clockwork, as soon as I moved out here, they started doing shows again. I met Rivers after a show. And it was kind of cool because he ended up wanting to ask me more questions about me than I got to ask him. He wanted to know where I lived. Um, what classes I was taking at MI, and uh, I said, yeah, I heard that you were kind of ashamed of going there. He said, no, it's not that I was ashamed of going there. He said, I loved going there. It's just, I went there when I was like a metalhead, and I was trying to be a shredder, and, you know, it just doesn't look good for, uh, you know, a geek band, which is what they eventually were kind of labeled as, but I just think that's so cool. They would have recorded so many demos in that building, they would have spent most of their time creating what became Weezer. They would have written Buddy Holly here. I mean, they they wrote that once they actually had a deal in like this fit of optimism. But to know that Let's Sew Our Pants Together, Paper Face, Thief You've Taken All That Was Me, Only In Dreams, My Name Is Jonas, um, the sweater song, Say It Ain't So, all that was done here. And I wish I could get to the backyard because the the backyard is where that scene from Say It Ain't So where they're uh, kicking the hacky sack around and everything. But just to see that is pretty cool. I didn't realize when I came out here to check this out it was a duplex. But yeah, the front is 2222 and then there's a little side entrance. But uh, I don't want to go disturb anybody. The most important thing I think for me is that we got to see that garage because... Actually, that is that is the house, but that's the garage part of the house. So the house is to the left of this garage. 
there's a little doorway that went from directly from the house into the garage and then a doorway that went out the back of the garage into the backyard and back where that back um, the back door would have been is where Brian Bell would have stood and I'll put little pieces from say it ain't so in here as well as a picture with uh, of me with Rivers Cuomo when I met him when my hair was all crazy and what's also pretty cool is that once I moved out here I probably had lived in Los Angeles for about three months and I was walking home from music school one day and uh, I passed Brian Bell and he was coming back from the uh, the magazine stand on Coenga and he stopped in for about a half an hour and talked to me and I told him I was gonna ask out this girl when I got home and that she was a big Weezer fan so he wrote a little note to her and uh, now she's a comic her name's Wendy Starling but he, uh, he wrote this little note saying, Wendy, go out with Jordan, which was pretty funny. So there you go. A little bit of the history and the birthplace of one of the greatest bands of all time, in my opinion, and one of my favorite bands, Weezer. And if you were ever curious, they were pretty much right off the uh, where the train stop is on the Expo line, Expo and Bundy. This was their little street that they lived on. I always thought it was in Hollywood. It's crazy, ever since I've lived out here, I've always wanted to make the pilgrimage out here to find where the house was and I could never find the address and then recently I stumbled upon it and I know I have a lot of Weezer fans and, uh, and probably the biggest one being me. So there we go. The birthplace of Weezer. I almost can't believe I'm getting to see it. There's a little alley over here off to the side of where their house was. And I know it's a little bit of a long shot, but sometimes they have connecting alleys that go down the backs of properties for the trash men to pick up. And I was just going to walk over here and see if I could see the, that backyard. <laughs> Never know. Sometimes. Nope. Unfortunately not. Their backyard actually... Well, it actually would have been right, I guess you can kind of. And I think you could actually see those little uh, flowers and roses in this shot when they're playing hacky sack. So one of the things I forgot to mention while I was out at the Weezer house is that in, uh, well I did say in 2003 that there are a long group of friends that had been like moving in and out and people that had been basically taking over the lease ever since they left. Um, in 2003 when they were asked to leave, uh, the owners of the property wanted to, I guess, redo it or renovate it or whatever. Um, Weezer was pretty cool because what they did was, if you see in the video, and I'll post a, a little clip of it in here. You can see the walls of the garage where they had used carpeting to help dull out the sound and, and uh, isolate the sounds for recording. In 2003, when they knew that their friends were going to have to move out of here and it was going to be renovated, Weezer invited all their fans to come out there and let people cut little squares off of that carpeting. So I'll show it to you right here. I thought that was pretty cool. And then in... Uh, 2013, Johnny Knoxville and Weezer did like a little video where they rode around to some of their old haunts and they actually went to this house and said that um, it still looked exactly the same as when they lived there. So I guess the story about it uh, being renovated or whatnot, um, I guess that was just to get them all out of there. But what I did notice while I was there was that uh, whoever, it looks like a construction contracting um, company or business or person would live in there because it's a duplex, like I showed you guys. Um, and the other little parking uh, driveway they had off to the left I didn't put on camera had about three contracting vehicles with tools and all that stuff in it, and that's kind of what was in the driveway, so I assume that's what who lives there now. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I wanted to see that, like I said, since even before I moved out here, and 
at some point I just never found the address and they never thought to look for the address and I'm so glad that I got to go see it today. But the weather was starting to take a turn for the worse so anything could happen with the rest of this day. I don't understand what the multicolored bear thing is. What is that? Well, no rain as of yet, but it's just that, you know that ever so slight sprinkling that you feel? You couldn't even wipe it off of your skin because it's that light, but you can feel yourself getting hit with it. That's what we're getting right now. I promise, I know you think I'm lying right now, but I'm not. Oh, by the way, guys, um, I'm gonna give you a little teaser as to what you can be looking forward to this week. And I know it's a real, real finite group of fans that this guy had but I am going to be doing a Captain Beefheart vlog here pretty soon because I'm uh, I've been listening to some Captain Beefheart again recently and found the address for one of the houses he had a bunch of uh, various places that have a story but I found one of them I think I'm gonna go do it this week before the 200th vlog hey it's Dave that was Dave honking at us. That's hilarious. You were guilty. I looked down and you had grass hanging out of your mouth. What are you doing? What are you eating? Dude, what are you eating? It's Abbey Road. Or Shabby Road. Am I crazy? It is President's Day today, isn't it? Or when you guys are watching this yesterday, I... I mean, I don't know what days people have off anymore because I just saw a postal truck and the manager of my building is in her office. Usually people don't work on President's Day, I thought. I guess maybe they uh, they take off National Pizza Day, but they don't take off President's Day anymore. What's up, Joster? We're probably going to have to call it a night here pretty soon, huh? We got a big day going tomorrow. A little teaser for the fans.